Hi, it's Mr. Simone from Hamden Middle School. Uh, the purpose of today's video is to look at arithmetic sequences and be able to write the recursive and explicit rule for each. Um, when we talk about sequences in class, to be arithmetic, we know that we have to be either adding or subtracting by some common difference. In other words, what is that pattern that we're either adding or subtracting by? I mean, if there is one, it happens to be arithmetic. We have two different sequences here. We have one that's finite, which means that it ends. It has a starting term and it has an ending term. And in this case, we have what is known as an infinite sequence because of the three dots at the end. This just means that it goes on and on and on. There is no end in sight. Um, before we actually get into writing the um, recursive and explicit formulas, I'd like us to kind of talk a little bit about establishing what the limits are. We know finite end, and we know that infinite uh, obviously go on forever, but let's establish what the terms uh, are. So for this first one, um, our terms are limited in the fact that we have our first term, which happens to be 5, and that runs until the number 14, which happens to be the fourth term. Some of my students, and some of you watching, may actually uh, write these values down in this fashion. All right, Our first term is 5, and it happens to run to the fourth term, which is 14. A common mistake when identifying our limits is students will write 5 here and 14 above, which is not correct. For our infinite um, sequence, we write the same notation where any a or any term is going to be between our first term, which in this case happens to be 2, all the way to what happens to be infinite. So we can write infinity. Now, these are uh, arithmetic sequences, and we should be able to find a common difference for both of them. For the first one, you'll notice that we do in fact add by 3. That is our common difference. On your paper, when you're doing this kind of work, you're going to want to write down what that is. What is that common difference? In this case, it's 3. To be recursive, there's a few different things we need to do. We need to be able to write out um, some specifics. To be recursive, or to write a recursive rule, we establish what the first term is first, and that you always have to do. In this case, our first term happens to be 5. Second, um, what we want to do is write, if we look for any term in the sequence, we have to find what the previous term happens to be plus that common difference. So to do that, if I'm looking for specific terms, I have to look at a previous term, use that value, and either add or subtract that common difference. Well, how do we write that? We write that as a and then sub n, or n minus 1, as that previous term. And that's the notation we use. For example, if I was looking for the third term, I have to look at the second term, which is 1 minus that value, plus the common difference. And in this case, our common difference is plus 3. And that's how we write, um, for an arithmetic sequence, that's how we write the recursive formula, recursive rule. If we're going to jump to explicit, I'll just write e, Explicit has kind of a similar setup, slightly different though. This states that if we look for any nth term, we do look at the first term, which happens to be in this case uh, 5, and we add on the product of the common difference um, and that kind of previous, uh, previous value. So this will be 3 times that n minus 1. And that's kind of the explicit uh, formula for, uh, for the, uh, this arithmetic sequence. All right, let's look at the, the next example. So the next example, we'll notice that we go from 2 to 12 to 22 to 32 and so on and so forth. This pattern, we're actually adding by 10. So this common difference is going to be 10. To, be, to write a recursive rule for this, you want to establish what that first term is, and that first term happens to be 2. And to find any term, or any nth term in the sequence, we look at the previous term, 
<clears throat> or a, and then n minus 1 in that subset there, plus what the common difference is, which happens to be 10. For explicit, to find any term, we take that first term, which is 2, <clears throat> and we add on there the product of the uh, common difference times the previous term. Now, using recursive uh, rules or using um, explicit rules, or we'll call them formulas kind of interchangeably, this is really nice to use um, if you just kind of have a finite set. Um, you can kind of identify certain patterns. Maybe there's one value that happens to be missing. The recursive rule is kind of a nice way to use or find those values in a set that you know all the terms. Um, or you can see them all um, in that finite set. The explicit form is really nice, especially when working with infinite uh, arithmetic sequences. The reason for that is I may ask you, hey, like, what's the 70th term or what's the 1,000th term? It might be a little bit more difficult um, to use the recursive to find that because to find the previous term and add by 3, it, it can be kind of difficult. But with a, the explicit form, you're able to actually substitute in the specific values or that specific term to help you uh, uh, find the find the the actual number. So kind of some differences there, but some similarities between the two. I want to do one more example. Uh, for this one, we're going to look at um, kind of a pattern that, that, that happens to be decreasing. So we'll look at a finite set. Uh, the first thing I like to do, again, is kind of establish what our limits are for that set. In this case, our first term happens to be uh, 10, and that runs to uh, the number 2, which in this case is going to be the 1, 2, 3, 4, the fifth term. So we know that our nth terms, any term that we're looking at, is from the first to the fifth. There's only five possible values. Next thing we do is we have to establish and figure out what is our common difference. In this case, our common difference is subtracting by 2. As we move from one term to another, we are subtracting by 2. And you could write negative 2. Some of my students prefer to think of this common difference as actually addition. So they may write this as kind of plus negative 2. And you can do that if you'd like as well. But just know that that difference, that common difference, is that we're decreasing by 2. Adding by negative 2 means the same thing. Next thing we're going to do is look at the recursive way to write this um, formula. We start with the first term, so a sub 1 is 10. To find any term in this, what we do is we look at the previous term, which happens to be that kind of sub n minus 1, just like if I happen to look at you know this term as being my fourth term, and this being my third term. To find the fourth term, I have to subtract 1, so that 4 minus 1, which is the third term, plus the common difference. And again, you can write this as minus 2 or plus negative 2. Either one is acceptable. Lastly, for an explicit uh, way to write this, To find any term, any nth term in the sequence, we establish what the first term is plus the product of the common difference and the previous term, which in this case happens to be negative 2 times the previous term. And that's kind of how I write it. I, I prefer to keep that in parentheses as well, just kind of show that ownership for that negative 2. So I hope this video helps. Um, again, we'll be practicing more of this in class. There are some benefits to using the, or writing the recursive uh, rule or the explicit rule. Explicit rule, I, I kind of prefer a little bit more. Um, but again, uh, this is kind of where we're at. So I hope this helps. Keep practicing. Um, if you have any issues, let me know. Good luck.